good day and welcome to our program. I am Davina Lee and today I'm joined in studio with Mrs. Matherin Emanuel. Mrs. Matherin Emanuel, she's one of St. Lucia's foremost filmmakers. Under her belt, she has four feature films. Today she's in studio with some of her cast and crew to discuss her latest film, Shante's World. Welcome, Matherin. Thank you. Okay, and also join you on, on set right now is Miss Jane Flavius, who is your assistant director slash actress slash what else? <laughs> you know. She's a director and actor. An actor, yeah. okay. Not extra, really. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for people who don't know who Matherin Emanuel is, give us a brief, you know, who is Matherin Emanuel? Well, um, Matherin Emanuel, um, St. Lucia's award-winning film producer, um, as you previously said. Um, I'm a teacher by profession. Uh, taught for 32 long years, and um, <laughs> um, during, I think it was in 2005, I decided to use the audiovisual medium to reach out to young people. And that's how um, Ribbons of Blue was born. Mm -hmm. After I had produced the first film, Tears in the Valley, mm -hmm. and St. Lucians got incensed about that production, I decided why not continue. I should continue producing films that would uh, inspire our youth and uh, also families. And Ribbons of Blue was sent to the UK, I'm um, sorry, to New York, mm -hmm. where um, I received my first award. Um, from Ribbons of Blue, I decided to continue. So, Troubled Waters came into play, and then um, Nana's Paradise, and currently we are working on Shanti's World. So, I have never stopped producing because this is what inspires me because of mm -hmm. the messages and whatever. So. All right. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. So, Jane, um, is this, was this film your first entry into the film world, or have you been working with Matherin before? Yes, I worked with Master in a long time when we were um, involved in some stage production mm -hmm. with a group called Visio, uh, Vision de la Vie. And I also took part in um, Ribbons of Blue and Troubled Waters. So, I mean, that's my first time acting as director, could <laughs> assistant director with her. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but mm -hmm. um, not my first time. Okay, so mm -hmm. what was that experience like in a different um, role? Because first you were an actress and you've had that background in theatre. You said before, previously? Yes. So now, as an assistant director, were you behind the scenes and having the headaches along with Matthew? <laughs> what was that like? It was challenging, but it was fun. And um, I mean, along the way, I learned a lot. Okay. And um, it, it was just an exciting journey. Okay. With her. Okay, yeah. we'll talk about the journey. <laughs> so, um, Matherin, um, s tell me a little bit about this new project, Shante's World. Um, give us a little insight into the film without giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> um, in 2014, the AVFA, Audiovisual Film Association, mm -hmm. um, facilitated a competition for professionals in mm -hmm. the audiovisual um, uh, platform, on that platform, and um, I decided to pitch and um, I won. And that came about from inspiration which I received after traveling during the, um, through, um, through the region. Mm -hmm. um, I received a grant from the European Union to take my films to uh, the four Caribbean islands of my choice and I selected St. Vincent, Grenada, Dominica and Antigua. Mm -hmm. And uh, whilst um, I traveled to those Caribbean islands, I realized that we are lacking something sig significant within the region, and that is our past, our history. Whilst it is true that we have our senior citizens, like people like my, my mother, who is 94, mm -hmm. who tells us the stories of the past and what it was like in the Caribbean during that period of time, that is during the 1940s and whatever, I, I decided that um, I would uh, try to secure or preserve uh, that culture mm -hmm. that existed back then and inform, use it as a tool for information, education, entertainment and inspiration within the region, not just St. Lucia, but embrace mm -hmm. the whole Caribbean and um, produce a film that we would resonate with mm -hmm. culture-wise. And that's how Shanti was born. Um, the word Shanti simply means bold, black, and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of us who live in the Caribbean are bold, black, and beautiful. I'm not saying they are not white folks, but <laughs> the majority are black people. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I decided to, you know, um, work on th that production. And um, 
that really, to me, it was something that I got mm -hmm. passionate about. Mm -hmm. I started, I wrote the script um, after Drain Your. Usually, I would just, you know, the, the, the concept would be born, and I would mm -hmm. just work with it. If it's mm -hmm. from camera, my actors, I would work with the camera, my actors, and my brain. This mm -hmm. time around, I remember Drain Your Frederick told me, my friend, you know, this time you'll have to put your butt down and produce <laughs> a script. And when she said that, you mm -hmm. know, I said, okay. I said, Drenia, I'll be humble, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. I have never written a script before, mm -hmm. but this time around, I'll, I'll be okay. obedient, I'll do that. And so I, for I your wrote first one. three films, yes. it was no script? It was no just script, just from my brain to the camera. Okay, so what was that process actors. like for you? It was really, I don't know, it's one thing I cannot describe because many um, producers I've met told mm -hmm. me that's virtually impossible. You cannot produce a feature length film mm -hmm. the way I, I, I yes, explain it. I don't it. understand how you, I, I, <laughs> but you were it able happened to. over and over again. Right. And I guess I was inspired to do it that way because, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the concept was always given birth to, and I mean, a movie a production or full length feature film mm -hmm. always came out of it. Right. So it worked back then. So if um, Hollywood producers tell me no, I can argue that it can happen. Right. Because it happened with me three times, you know. Right. Okay. So but this time around I didn't do it that way. I mm -hmm. sat down and for many months I, I wrote okay, uh, the so script. For, so for yeah. that script, um it was a specific time period. Um you said the it maybe early nineteen forties, going into the sixties. Yeah. Um what kind of research did you do? Um, in terms of the historical background for St. Lucia and part of it we will find out later takes place in the UK. So in terms of research, like how did you do research? Was just speaking to people or? It got very exciting after um, I won the competition. Mm -hmm. But there are things I never really thought of. Mm -hmm. It's only when I decided to write the script I realized what I was in for and into. We are not living in the 40s, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the props and whatever I needed, mm -hmm. some of them are non-existent. So, mm -hmm. but um, I still took on the challenge because right. I had the passion and I really wanted it to happen. So I uh, started identifying, mm -hmm. you know, the locations, as you mm -hmm. said, uh, um, reading much more mm -hmm. than I ever did before. Right. And throughout that journey, I realized that we in St. Lucia have not really secured mm -hmm. our history or documented mm -hmm. it. Okay, we'll be right back in a minute with more stories from Shanti's world. Yes, and Lucia, this is your boy Mark 11 telling all the drivers on the road, be careful on the roads today and always roll if a designated driver. If you're the driver, drink responsibly. Go and come back home safely. Out. A message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness, Human Services, Gender Relations and this station. Okay, welcome back. We're in the studio talking to Mathurie Manuel and we're joined by her film family. Um, on stage with us right now is Miss Liz Tobier, who is the prop manager and also an actress in the film. So welcome, yes. Liz. Thank you. Yes. So tell me, what was your experience like? Because um, this film is a period piece. So you have the hair must be right, the clothes <coughs> must be right, the cars must be right. You know everything. The location must be right. What was that experience like for you as the prop manager? Well. I must say it was very challenging, mm -hmm. especially since we had to work with props from the 1960s. Mm -hmm. So that was quite challenging. But I am the prop manager, but I have to give credit to Mrs. Mathurin Emanuel mm -hmm. because she sourced all her props herself. <laughs> she even had to go far back as you going up to the States, I think it was, mm -hmm. to get her props. So what kind of props? Tell me about the props. Uh, <laughs> I guess she will have to tell you about it herself. <laughs> so tell us, Mary, what, what were the props like in the, the film? The grip, the old suit. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, dresses like what you're wearing right now. Mm -hmm. And um, the shirts for the men, the mm -hmm. corduroy and whatever mm -hmm. for the plantation um, workers. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the, the very interesting thing that happened is when the trailer was produced, a mm -hmm. uh, pastor from, the, from Florida Mm -hmm. saw the trailer, a Jamaican pastor, mm -hmm. and when he saw it, he decided to come on board. Oh, wow. But the way he did it was so interesting, it became a miracle for us because he sent us a huge box of clothing mm -hmm. and he said to me, Mistress Emmanuel, what, um, I'm Jamaican, I'm Caribbean, I love what I see, mm -hmm. and um, I would like to ensure that I help. Mm 
So what I want you to do is to just sell the items, sell the clothing at a dollar piece in St. Lucia mm. and use that money to, you know, feed your actors. Right. Interestingly, amazingly, when I opened that box, it's just what I wanted. Just the what shirts needed. I needed for the um, for a scene, or white shirts, mm -hmm. jeans, old pants that we could use for the men, right. dresses and whatever, the hats. But then when it comes to the suitcases, the old mm -hmm. grips, not many people still have those. So mm -hmm. I normally travel to the States. When I went there, I went to the thrift stores at early morning, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, mm -hmm. I would be at the thrift store waiting. Mm -hmm. So that when they bring in their stuff, right. at least when they have their suitcases I would be able to pick and choose mm -hmm. what I really wanted mm -hmm. when I got 13 I decided well that would be okay because with camera tricks mm -hmm. you can actually multiply right. you know what that is right <laughs> so um I got them and placed them in the boxes. We were also able to travel to the UK. You should have seen us at the airport if I were. <laughs> so people thought you came and yeah, landed in 1955 I, I or something. I the minute they saw my face, they knew we were, not, you know, mm -hmm. getting ready for some action somewhere. Right. So we were able to travel with those suitcases, those okay. old grips to the UK. So did you get We got props? what we wanted. Okay. So your props yeah. for St. Lucia and for yes. the UK because yeah. the UK, you also have to... Mm -hmm. to portray you set yes, also right. in yes. 1940s mm -hmm. yeah. london mm -hmm. as well so yeah. what was that like what was that experience like it was wonderful um you know that's one of the things that i learned when you get inspired you you just have to move on if you don't move as i said to my son if you do nothing nothing will happen mm -hmm. and as we moved along from one stage to the next whatever mm -hmm. we needed were provided so when just when I was about to travel to the UK with my team, I got some discouragement, you know, from some, you know, persons. But then I remained enthusiastic and passionate about what I was doing. And mm -hmm. this gentleman one day, when someone had just injected a negative thought in my mind, mm -hmm. just about four hours after being told that I wouldn't be able to get any help in the UK, mm -hmm. this gentleman called Matthew Alfred. Mm -hmm. You'll hear about we'll him, him from him sometime. Mm -hmm. um, he called and he. Um, asked me whether mm -hmm. I had intentions to come up to the UK and he said to me explicitly you have mm -hmm. a home okay, up there great. and that was amazing it was a miracle up to now I consider it to mm -hmm. be a miracle we'll talk yeah. to him about yes. that when we when we <laughs> yeah. um, think but mm -hmm. I just want to talk quickly before yeah. we go to break about choosing the locations because that's a big part of the film yeah so in not just in the UK but in St. Lucia what was that process like because from the trailer, what I saw, I saw it like this beautiful, yeah. like a plantation. But where did you get, where, where were you able to get those locations? St. Lucia is simply beautiful. Mm -hmm. And all the historic sites, and there's just so much more to what we have seen. Um, but it took a lot of time, energy, you know, um, walking through the forest, um, going, um, driving, you know, around, mm -hmm. um, going as far as Soufre. You know, but the, the good thing is we had people who were also interested in the project, who were willing, drivers who were willing to take us from one location to the next. We would walk and drive around and ask for permission to use those locations. Mm -hmm. And everything worked out well. We even had too much than, mm -hmm. much more than we needed, you know. Okay. So it was an amazing, amazing experience. Strenuous sometimes, I would get tired, mm -hmm. you know, at night. So I would sleep with one head there and the other head there. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, you <laughs> then, would say that. But overall, it was wonderful meeting people mm -hmm. and you know just knowing that they too share mm -hmm. your passion. Mm -hmm. That was really encouraging. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Okay, so we're gonna take another break. But when we come back, we're gonna speak to your actors yeah. and we're gonna hear what their process was like. What it was like working with you. If it was their first time and so mm -hmm. on. Thank you. So, right. so just stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm innovative. I'm productive. I am creative. I constantly improve what I do and how I do it. I am output oriented. I never stop learning. I give up my best always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back, and we're still talking Shanti's world, and now we're joined by two actors from the film, it's Denzi Charles and Colby Devo. Welcome, mm -hmm. guys. All right. Thank so you for thank having you. us. No problem. So, Denzi, tell me, was this your first film? Yes, it was. And what was that like? 
Well, to me, it was a very fun experience making new friends, having new adventures and new challenges to face. Okay. So how did you get involved? Did you know Mrs. Emanuel? Did you say, well, well one day I want to be an actress? Actually, I was at class and she actually came to my class and she saw me and she was like, you, you're perfect. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Okay, that sounds about right. <laughs> what about you, Colby? Uh, yeah, no, this is my first experience in film of any kind. I mm -hmm. did theatre at secondary school. Mm -hmm. um, and funnily enough, it was when we were getting ready for, because um, I went to St. Mary's College. Mm -hmm. We were getting ready for literary night. Uh, my principal at the time, Mr. Sion, came up to me and he said, and I will repeat this word for word, <laughs> um, there's a lady uh, in Derry Soul who's making a film and they need a white boy. <laughs> <laughs> So I told her I had one, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so I went down, I auditioned for the, pe the, the part, um, mm -hmm. and you know, it, it was, the experience was incredible. Um, okay. I've, it, Masra said she wrote a script, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'll tell you this, you get down, you read the script, and then she tells you, okay, all I need from you is you have to say this <laughs> line, right? Everything else, you just make it up, you kind of <laughs> go around, because I know you can do it, and I've seen you do it, I just need this line. So it was, um, yes, there's a script, but a lot mm -hmm. of it is really um, the actor being in character mm -hmm. and really putting out what okay. the character would so be. So just on that note, how did you research for the part? Because especially if you have to just take it like almost like you ad lib, go, go mm -hmm. along, except you just know what you want to bring out of the character. Mm -hmm. What kind of research did you do? How, did you, how deep did you dive into your character for that role? Um, to say I went and did a lot of research, not really. Mm -hmm. um, I did history for CXC, so mm -hmm. I knew, um, you know, what happened during this kind of times, and people would send their children away for school and mm -hmm. for all sort of things. Um, so it was it was kind of easy, especially when, I mean, you'll see in mm -hmm. in the in the movie there are scenes where. Um, Shante's dad or, or mm -hmm. my mother, for example, they make it very easy mm -hmm. to play the kind of um, character that I have to play mm -hmm. simply because of how well they portray their characters. Mm -hmm. So it was easy just to be able to, um, say, bounce off them and feed okay. off their energy, give them back the same energy and find your place okay. um, in the scheme. Yeah. So Denzi, what about you? So when you got on set, what was that like? Well, at first I was terrified. Mm -hmm. I had to come out of my shell. Being in this project really helped me with that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I would say I'm a pretty bold person now because okay, of this film. Because of the film. Okay, so are you looking forward to being in more films? Definitely. Definitely. Okay, so like actors <coughs> have a very special relationship with the director. So what was that like for you guys with, with Mathrin? What was that like? Well, Miss Maffron is a very crazy and funny <laughs> person. <laughs> so our my mother would say I'm the same way. So mm -hmm. our personalities just blended very well. Okay. And for you, Colby, what was that like? Um I I never felt unwelcome. I never felt ostracized or different. Um mm -hmm. and um, when you get down there, they did they always teased me, everybody Mm -hmm. tease me about one thing I can't speak a word of Creole mm -hmm. at all so everybody would tease me about that but otherwise I never felt you know different at all it, it was a great um, place to be a great experience mm -hmm. and were you time. also in the UK cast as no. well or you were just mm -mm. They and left you look me a little behind. upset about that <laughs> they left me behind it was yeah okay. no, but uh, I could understand because mm, I mean expenses and everything mm -hmm. and um, at the time story didn't yeah, Travel no, um, because my character would have gone to France on the other side. And mm -hmm. um, at the time, I had Cape around the corner mm -hmm. um, because it, I think they went in April and mm -hmm. um, my exam started in like May. So there was no way my mother would have let me go anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So is like any other experience from the film that you guys want to share? Like anybody probably wants to be an actress. They don't know where to start. They don't know what to do. Like Denzi, for example, somebody who's shy. And maybe has never thought that they could be an actress, and you're saying that it has helped you in terms of you know being more open. So what would you say to somebody who wants to? Well, what I would say to them is that 
with me what it was that i thought i'd be criticized a lot mm -hmm. i just want them to know that it's not as bad as you would think you don't get criticized as much more people like want to be friends with you and you make more friends and become more open with you. oh wow so you like it's like popular after the <laughs> <laughs> like you become the celebrity mm -hmm. <laughs> so could be like for you like what's next do you think because you said you did theater arts mm -hmm. so is this something that you want to a path you want to continue on um Acting for sure. I love mm -hmm. acting. I love being on stage. Being in a movie, yeah, maybe not so much. I, okay. I'm also extremely shy, and being mm -hmm. in the public eye, um, mm -hmm. that's kind of hard for me. I, like people coming up to me and asking me, "Are you in a movie?" or, or recognize me from something, I, I, mm -hmm. I tend to shy away. But um, mm -hmm. my problem with that is my career choice is. Um, mm -hmm. But I go to theater, so you're on yeah. stage and you have no <laughs> cut. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I've always said I like um, being in a play because mm. for two weeks you hear about it and then it's done. Right. This movie's going to be in people's homes when I'm 75 years old. <laughs> <laughs> on um, that note, <laughs> we have to take yeah. a break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to speak to Mathrin some more and speak about the UK experience. There are four basic rules to developing and maintaining good oral health. Brushing after meals and before going to bed, flossing at least once for the day, eating the right foods and visiting the dentist regularly. Remember, you want to keep those smiles for later years. A message from the Dental Department of the Ministry of Health and this station. Okay, welcome back and we're still talking Shante's world and now Mrs. Simano is back on stage, but we're also joined by Matthew Melcher. Um, before we get into Matthew's group, I want to bring up the fact that this film, part of it was, was done in the UK. Yeah. That is quite an expensive undertaking, as one might imagine. So what kind of support did you receive? Did you receive institutional support from government? Did you receive, and then, then we'll talk about the support you received from, from um, Mr. Melcher. Yeah, thanks. Um, I must confess that um, if it had not been for the government, we would not have been where we are right now. One of the things I always keep saying to myself, I never envisioned it would have been such an expensive project. It's, this is a high budget film, $667,000. Mm. And well, I mean, for the big countries, America and the UK, that's, that's not money. For but for us, that's more than half a million dollars. That's, you understand <laughs> much more than that. Mm -hmm. So um, we worked hard, extremely hard, to cut down on cost. Most times, I would wake up in the morning at one o'clock in the morning to cook for my my crew and my team, and that was sacrificial. Mm -hmm. Also, spending the nights writing the novel as well, and um, as I said previously. You know, we had to make up for, the, you know, for mm -hmm. quite a few um, things or sacrifice um, so mm -hmm. that we could, you know, make it a reality. Mm -hmm. But um, when it comes to, well, locally, I must thank um, Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose because she remained with us throughout the journey. Mm -hmm. She was always there, always encouraging and always attentive to our needs. Mm -hmm. And um, the government helped as much as possible. And we have still requested some more help mm -hmm. because what um, we wanted this film to be, it's not just St. Lucia, we are embracing the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And it is not just entertainment, it right. is um, our it's culture, our, our, our history. history. Mm -hmm. And we went all out to ensure that we we, we help preserve and conserve mm -hmm. that aspect of our Caribbean life and mm -hmm. culture. So let's, and bring in yes. well, let's bring in Mr. Yeah. Melcher. And how did his assistance help you? Because you're from the UK and you're from a group Friends of St. Lucia. Correct. Yeah. So you were also an actor in the movie. But tell us how you <laughs> and Matherin met up. And she has spoken about the assistance that she received um, from you. So just give us a little insight. Well, through the charity back in the UK, Friends of Sinister Clubs International. Tell us a little, bit about, a little bit about that charity. Oh, well, basically, this is a new charity with a branch of solutions in the UK. Um, and basically what we're aiming to do is to create a franchise, a, a charity franchise, where in the next few years we encourage people from around the world to form branches of Friends of St. Lucia so they can all work together by identifying various projects here on the island, working together 
with established branches here in the UK. Okay. So in the UK, one of my members happened to be a relative of the assistant director and I think also the director as well. Mm -hmm. And they have been talking without my knowledge. And I keep a lot of the meetings at my, at my venue in the UK. Mm -hmm. And it was closer to the, just before April, this member approached me and said, Matthew, um, <coughs> there's a group mm -hmm. from St. Lucia who's working on this project. Mm -hmm. They would need some place to live. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, access to a big six bedroom house in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so she said to me, it would be wonderful if we can, if you could think about helping them. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was a natural thing to do because right. when you have a project like this in St. Lucia, mm -hmm. I was also given a bug drop information about what they have done before. Right. So for me it was you know, an easy decision to say yes, the place mm -hmm. is available. And um, I contacted Ms. Mathrin mm -hmm. sooner or later. But and then I also see that you are a leading actor, so then how did that happen? <laughs> 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 I'm not sure myself, to be honest with you. I have never done anything quite like it. Um, right. Never imagined. And so uh, what was that experience like? It was a new experience, and how were you convinced? Or what about the story? I wasn't convinced. You, that's the thing. You weren't convinced, but because Matherin convinced you. I do remember <laughs> when I first spoke to Matherin. Um, she just mentioned to me when I, I remember the day when I, I called her to say, "Hey, are you still coming?" Because I, mm -hmm. I was told about it, but I never heard anything further. Mm -hmm. Because I was making plans to either visit so much at the times so I wanted to make my arrangements, mm -hmm. and then I spoke to her, and she disclosed that she had just spoken to someone who said she'd be very lucky if she found someone in the UK to mm -hmm. give them any form of assistance in terms of, of free accommodation. Mm -hmm. And I, at the very same time, I called to say the place is available. So, and that's mm -hmm. why she referenced the miracle right. that she mm -hmm. mentioned a while ago. So that was the first contact. But during the talk with her, she hinted, oh, <laughs> by the way, by the way <laughs> I think you, you might, might be perfect, exactly you yes. Know? <laughs> Looking at you and your accent, you might be perfect. Really <laughs> and I wasn't convinced, so I just brushed it aside. I said, "Nope, yes. I have the place for you. You let me know." And That's then, fantastic. She came you know, when the group came up. Mm -hmm. um, she also tried to help me to do some rehearsals, mm -hmm. and I wasn't buying it because I wasn't convinced. You know, <laughs> You're right? And uh, until the moment when I realized she was serious mm -hmm. about me participating. Right. And I decided, okay, well, let's just do it. Right. And let me just, then before we have to go to close, um, just the fact that this is a film about the Windrush generation. It's all, it was filmed in the UK. Do you see it as a ready market for your film? And in what way do you think you can export your film to the UK or get an audience on the UK? Um, well, currently, I'm thinking that we already have an established audience mm -hmm. because it's their story, you know, mm -hmm. and I think they will appreciate it. Um, as I said before, we, we put everything that we have into it, our time, our energy. Most of the actors did a superb job. I mm -hmm. cannot think, or, uh, I, I just cannot mm -hmm. recall one actor now mm -hmm. at this point in time who didn't do, you know, who their role, right. you know, well mm -hmm. enough. Okay. And so we anticipate a great film. Just being able to do a feature film, that is yeah. quite an undertaking. Yeah. And to be able to do a film now, in the UK and yeah. St. Lucia, what yeah. kind of advice would you give to a filmmaker, maybe not just a filmmaker, a musician, to somebody yeah. who's creative in a very tough industry? What kind of advice would you give to them? As I said previously, if you do nothing, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you don't listen to the negative vibes. You, you, you just move on. Um, as I said before, I never thought for a moment that it would not happen. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know how. And it just happened that, that Mr. Melcher called me that day and he mm -hmm. said, um, yeah, somebody told him and whatever, mm -hmm. and he's willing to help. And he became the avenue for it to mm -hmm. happen, you know. So even if he had not, I mm -hmm. still believe that some other channel would so have opened, opened, another door would have opened. Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at it. But I'm mm -hmm. happy we did uh, because he's a wonderful gentleman. Mm -hmm. He wonderful walked the, 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 <laughs> the path with us. He walked mm -hmm. the walk. He talked the talk. He mm -hmm. was always very cordial, very nice. Mm -hmm. And up to this date, we have adopted him as our own. So I think hopefully the next time we have you on mm -hmm. here, it will be to see the movie's done. Yes. It's ready in the cinemas. Yeah. And we're encouraging people to go out to see it oh yes so that's hopefully mm. the next time we see you this is what we'll be discussing yes. so i want to yeah. thank you and the entire shanty's world family for joining us at the gis studios for okay. this and so thanks for joining us guys and hopefully we'll be back with mrs matrin emmanuel very soon mm.